Howdy, and welcome back to another live coding session. Uh, where we left off, we can pick up things, and we can craft, and we can put the tool in our hand, but we have no indication of it. And once the tool is in our hand, we can now chop down trees. So before we start, we have one pull request that came in this week. It's from Sal again, the person who made our artwork. And it sets the camera to be... Um, or the coordinate system to be a bit more usable. So if we look up where we spawn items, um, spawn items, ah, here, the positions now are a bit more reasonable. They're based around an actual tile size that's constant in the game. And I think that's the find. It's been a while since I've looked at this. We have it defined in pixel size is defined somewhere. Let's just get pixel scale and then tile size. And that's defined in assets, which is convenient. That should make it easier to ration about where things are on screen. Um, so this week, I think I'm going to add UI to show where or what we have in our hand and give you the ability to take something out of your hand. And I might actually render it in the player's hand if I feel like that's um, worth doing. We still don't have player animations. Um, on the Discord, we discussed changing from the way we currently do UI, which is just sprites positioned relative to the camera, over to using Bevy's actual UI. And we have a theoretical idea that I think is very doable to... Um, I guess, let me start. The problem is the Texture Atlas sprites cannot be used in UI. It has to be a sprite, which would be its own standalone file, as far as I can tell. So we could take the Texture Atlas sprite and actually parse its internal data to create image or sprites. I guess it's image is the type we need in Bevy that would actually work with UI. I'm not going to do that, however, I've decided, because... I want to be able to like click and drag things at some point in the UI, and I don't know how we do that with Bevy's UI, and it's just, it just doesn't feel like we'd get that much out of using Bevy's real UI, except for, I guess, purism of doing everything in the correct way. But for now, this works. I might move today, things to not be children of the camera to be children of a separate object that is set to always follow the camera. Because I feel like that's a bit more clean for the hierarchy. And I also need to make sure these ground items aren't getting populated, because I like to keep the hierarchy clean. And I think that's going to be the goal for today, is just some cleanup. We might get to placing the campfire, which is what we need to click and drag for. Or I was thinking about doing biomes. Because it would be nice if like trees and saplings grew in one place and grass and flint appeared in other places and we actually could get some world generation going. So we have a lot of different directions that we can take the game in today, but let's start out with um, a tool UI. So to do that, I'm going to, I guess that would make most sense to be in player. And when we spawn the player, we're going to want a system for the player's hand UI. So right now we give the player empty hands, which is what holds the tool. And we need to actually render what's in those hands. So I think, actually, before we do that, let's move everything into, um, let's move everything out from being children of the camera. So let's make a new structure called, or a new component that will be uh, follows camera or camera follower. And we're gonna want a system to follow the camera. Uh, so that spawns the camera. Oh, camera follow. Oh, that makes the camera follow the player. So instead, actually let me grab this. Oh, we can update this to using um, 
Bevy 0 0.7 camera 2D tags. Uh, let's comment that out. Let's rename this to camera follows player, I guess. And then we can uncomment this. I think there's a hotkey for uncommenting, but I'll learn that a different day. So instead of game camera, we have camera 2D, which I think we have to import do. And I should clean this up wherever I see it. Yeah. And then I guess I just get rid of the game camera component. Beautiful. We don't need to insert it anymore. This is just clean up to get us more in line with um, Bevy 0.7. Uh, this one inventory UI needs to use the camera. Doing some cleanup is a good way to get warmed up back to the code base. What we have here, spawn crafting UI needs to use the camera. And mouse position uses camera. Oh, and I'm going to have to import this in all of these places. Oh. If I didn't just import something I don't want, let me go check. Oh, we don't want to import game camera. Um, hmm, I've just lost myself. Here we go. Tonight be or today might be a short day for me because it's incredibly hot in my house. What are you not happy about? Maybe if I just run Clippy. Uh, prelude. Cool. Cool. Make sure the game still runs. And we have done cleanup for the day. Cool. Camera transform should update its position, for example, sometimes. Head camera to stage. Oh, this is what they did in the um, the pull request. All other transforms to prevent non-deterministic. Hmm. I guess this isn't wrong. I would think to do it should probably actually like study pull requests before I merge them. But I just kind of trust people. And this is, it's like a stone soup of a project. It's, the community is all throwing in different parts. It's not um, meant to be something as clean and has a grand vision like Bevy. But this I would usually do as ordering. So it'd be after player movement, but I guess there's no, this is safer long-term because we don't ever have to think about it again. Because at some point, the cam the player might move or be moved by multiple systems. Interesting. So camera follow. This is going to be what we want. This component we're going to want on everything that's going to be the parent of UI. Ah, uh, but shouldn't this happen after this? Let's just start writing and see if how things work out. So we have the camera query and we want the transform of anything with camera follower. And we're gonna do the opposite of what we do here where uh, the follower query is gonna be what mutates and the camera is gonna be constant. And this will let us make entities that are always at the same relative position to the camera. Oh, relative position to the camera. So I guess camera follower needs an offset? No. Hmm. I guess it could, but it 
we could give camera follower a vector that's its offset, but I think the way we currently do things, they all already have their own transforms offset. So the follower query is going to be not single anymore. So it's for uh, mute of the transform in the follower query dot iter mute. And we'll get the camera transform. That's still single, but it's not mutable. And hope I'm not shaking my desk as I'm typing. And here we want to say transform dot translation will match the camera queries translation. This is I hate doing dot after a function, but it's it's just too convenient. And I'll change this to be translation. I try to like write the simplest code possible. Um, I guess that's actually something worth talking about because I saw a comment that sat in my mind recently. Um, the comment was complaining about the nun type or the nun object type. Yeah. So the theory was that item type should be option. And then we'd have none as a variant built into option, and then some for all of these. And my logic behind not wanting to do that was we'd be wrapping this in an extra enum. So fundamentally, we'd have the same number of options, but we'd be making none a first class thing. And then all of these would be like second class because they'd all have to always be wrapped in some. And then throughout the entire code, whenever we're using item type, we'd be checking it as an option. So we'd be adding all of this extra complexity that I don't think actually gets us any value. And maybe I'm wrong. I know it's probably not idiomatic rust to have a non enum, but options just an enum. And so why would I, why would I want to soil everything else with sums just because there's a chance it could be none was my thinking. And that also got me thinking about like my theory of code or my theory of like how I want the code in this project to look. And I'm kind of like my aesthetic is, and this is what I was trained in college is to write as simple as possible code. So somebody who's like read like the first five chapters of the Rust book should be able to understand exactly what I'm doing in this project. The goal is to solve every problem with the simplest, like most beginner friendly solution so that we can, um, in college they taught me it's so that you can move on to other projects and not be tied down to the code you wrote. But I think it's helpful here too, just to make it as accessible as possible. There's no point in adding things that are complex just for the sake of complexity, if simple things work, which isn't meant to be um, a strike at, um, anyone who's contributed code to this project because I appreciate all of it. It's just trying to uh, explain why it's not working. Where follows player. Oh, self. Um, it's just trying to explain like how I think about the code I write and why I tend to always use as simple as possible for loops and stuff. So things like this like freak me out because it's a function call and then a property access and that's not something that I could explain easily to somebody in middle school and watching videos like this is how I learned how to program in seventh grade. And that's kind of my target audience, I guess, is the next generation of people to be inspired by code. So I don't know. That was a, a bit of a ramble about myself, but the comment just weighed heavily on me to use option. And I want to have a good self-consistent reason why I don't. So now we have an untested system of the camera follower, which should run after the camera updates, which I think is fine. It does mean this post update step, I, I need to run the profiler and see how much happens in it, because we have just made it a linear path of systems. 
Not like performance is something we care about at this point, though. So crafting UI. We push it as a children of the camera entity, which is not what I want. I want to, and this actually cleans this up, I want to say let camera follower equal new entity. So command stop spawn. Uh, spawn bundle, transform bundle. Uh, default. And we're going to insert our camera follower component. And let's add that to the prelude. I might actually also reorganize the project into multiple modules and folders at some point. Now down here, uh, I need ID. And down here, we're going to say camera follower. I need to give it a name. But first, let's see if that works. Oh, hard crash. What do we got? Set. System param. Camera follow. Axis is components. Transform. Oh, without player instead of that, we want without camera follower. That's what happens when I'm coding while I talk. So the UI is nowhere to be seen. Let's see if this actually is. It is following the camera. Where are y'all? Ah, I need this to be not offset. More of this should happen. Okay. I need, a, I'm gonna hard set the Z value on camera follows because this is only used for UI. So I'm just gonna hard set it to like 99. 999. And we do a doc comment. Uh, marks something that should always be constant, always be in a constant place on screen. Uh, use for UI. Does that actually, um, Tutorials like coding, like coding survival game. I also changed the name of the project. Uh, Coco doc dash dash open. I wonder how that looks. Because I also probably should do a documentation pass on this project as it becomes more of an open source community thing. Oh, I have to wait on the file lock. But the doc should be done soon. I hope they open up here. So, I guess after that, what's next? We'll do the same thing for the uh, inventory UI. So I can start working on that code. All right. Oh, that's updating it. Spawning it. Oh. What did I just do? I'm undoing. Um, good grief. Building documentation takes a while. Let's just delete that, delete that, grab this, uh, give it a name. Uh, crafting UI. I like organization sometimes. What are you not happy about closing parentheses? Help. Okay. Now when we spawn the inventory UI, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Delete that. 
Oh, my code's compiled. Here are my docs. Go away. What did I just create? Make something marked in a constant place used for UI. So it's not going to put a new line there. Uh, where is this game camera? It's like 90 degrees in my house, so my brain's not working as well as it could. So we now have camera follower, which I'm just going to use Prelude Star. Star, probably. And camera follow her. And the name here is Inventory UI. away beautiful is anything else attached to the camera no I'm very happy with that that's a commit so we spawn the UI this also has the swapping the camera 2d baked in uh, wait what is the clippy warnings Unused imports. Let's clean those up. Render camera 2D. Oh, because I changed something and then immediately obsoleted it. That's fine. Uh, what do you. Now you don't compile. Why not? Camera 2D. So you do need this. Why? You don't need this. Now I'm happy. Let's add all that. And change the UI to not be child of camera. And I think, yeah. Cool. So there's going to be a little bit of a jump cut in the video this week because as I was recording it got to be like 80 degrees in my office and I wasn't able to think or form coherent sentences so I threw away all those changes and I'm going to start from where I had committed. So I hope that's not too jarring but it does mean we have to take a minute for me to get reoriented in the code. So I think what I was going to do next is I want to set up the inventory UI for the player's hand. Or I guess it's not inventory UI, the UI box for the player's hand. And so I need to figure out where we should place that. I think it makes sense to be on the player. At some point, we need to break this up into folders. Because um, we have some things that are general game. And then we have a lot of things that are I guess player specific. It's not clear at this point exactly what the big structure of this project will be. Maybe when we add more like passive mobs and stuff, we'll see it. So let's get the player inventory working. So I think I want to do this the same way that I did the um, crafting inventory in the or the crafting UI and the inventory UI. <clears throat> so let's see. All right, first we need to spawn it. So I think I just want, there's only gonna be one box. So let's get the camera follower, which will be the parent of it. And let's create a system. It's actually been a while since I've just programmed raw bevy. I've been going down the rabbit hole of shaders all week. So spawn hand UI, which needs uh, commands and probably graphics. Let me remember in this project, what is graphics? 
Oh, it has just the index for the box and the handle for the atlas. Perfect. Let's paste that. And we have the follower parent, which I'm gonna name hand UI. And now we need to spawn the actual box. So the box we spawn by cloning the atlas and the sprite is the graphics box of size one. I guess we probably don't need this line anymore. But I don't want to be I'm trying not to get pulled down rabbit holes as best I can. And what else do we need? We have the sprite and we need to spawn the sprite sheet. And I probably am going to need to create, um, probably doesn't need to be mutable. Um, let's see. In the new coordinate system, the inventory is at minus four. Let's try just four and see where that gets us. Maybe like seven. Um, and this will be the box. Yeah. So let's go see just how that looks. Let's add this as a startup system. Add startup system. Self, uh, what did I just call this? Spawn handy UI. I'm tempted to actually add shaders to this game. Just because that's all I've been doing for the past two weeks. But I'll resist the urge for now. Right, what do we got? No children. Well, fair enough. Uh, so I want to... I guess I can spawn this at the end. And then add child. Um, and we need this guy's ID. So let's say let box equal. And add child box. Uh, UI box. I hate all keywords. And I probably am not going to need to keep track of that. Let's see now. Ah, that's beautiful. So what, what have I done wrong? Do we actually need to set the size to one? I'd figure that would be the default, but maybe I'm forgetting something. Hmm. What do you, oh, mutable. Hmm. Oh, wow. Okay, so that size isn't default one. Its default is um, in pixel units. So there's the hand UI. We can move it. That's a, quite the stretch for my eyes. Um, I need to remember I already have 25 minutes of video this week, so I probably don't need to go a full hour. Okay. So now I want to have the player's hand graphic. So let's do a update hand UI. Just following the Unity convention of on start and on update, I guess. And when we update this UI, we do this crazy complicated thing. This is for text. Where we like can figure out if it should exist and despawn the children. This is um This is horrible. Mm. I'm gonna actually mark this function as um, makes me needs uh, rework. Too complex. So the problem is we need to, that would be theoretical. 
we need to have the box. So let me give it a, a component to mark it. Uh, strut and box. And it's probably just going to need to be a component. It's just a tag. Let's tag the box. And we don't need to clone the sprite. And we'll tag the box. Uh, and box. Okay. And now we'll query for the box. So we can get it here. I wish there was like a custom single query for things that we knew there was one of. I guess that's what a resource is, but. I've already decided this shouldn't be a resource. Um, let me think. Brain's shutting down. Ah, box query. Which is going to be a query for the hand box. And I probably just need the entity because I'm working with its children. Oh, well, children. Um, with hand box. Yeah. And then, hmm. If I, give it, if I give it a child, is there a way to make the, um, oh, just change the visibility on it. Now, see how that works. So for my children query, I'm going to uh, expect that the box will have a child with uh, visibility. Okay, visibility. Thank you. And I'm also going to need to mutate its texture out with sprite. Yeah, let's see. Let's see how this works. And that needs to be a tuple. So let's add the child here. Which is going to be a sprite. Do sprites have visibility on them? No. But the bundle does. So let's create. Um, Bring me, I'm going to sneeze. It's still allergy season, unfortunately. Um, so let's do hand graphic. Doesn't matter. I just like to give things names. And we need a sprite here. Which is um, going to contain what goes into the hand graphic. And the hand graphic is going to be a child of the box. I don't know if I use the hierarchy system too much. It just feels right compared to other game engines. So we now have the hand graphic, which needs to be um, at all zeros. Uh, probably there's a zero, right? Beautiful. Oh, come on. And then the visibility. Is there a new on this thing? What do you mean there? Oh, visibility. Default true. Yeah, okay, whatever. Um, is visible. Is false by default. I really actually kind of don't like this dot dot default that they added because when I format um, it gets sucked into this which has been difficult to see but I'll stick with it let's use a comma oh and then that, the formatting also adds a comma automatically and VS Code doesn't know to tab to complete it so I'm sure in other people's setups it's better but for mine, it just doesn't work exactly how I'd want it to. Mm -hmm. 
So now we also need to query for the player's hands. I guess I could just tag um, this with handbox and I don't have to do all this children nonsense. Oh, and I already had on accident. That would have been a nightmare. Um, so now I actually don't need to query for the box. I just query for anything that has this tag. Um, sorry if today feels a little slow. It's just, uh, it's been a long week. I just, it's been two weeks since I've actually done any work on this project, so I just need to, you know, get it out. Keep project flowing. Um, box. And box. So now, let's say let mute visible. Uh, mute sprite is hands box dot single mute. There should always be one. I don't know if this is actually a horrible practice. I'm trying to imagine a situation where there wouldn't be a player box on screen. Like if we ever do like a cutscene. But I guess I don't want to over-engineer it up front. And that'd be very visible and easy to fix. Uh, so I also need to query for the player, the hands, hands query. I think we're trying out not typing query after everything in this video. Which means the code's not going to have a consistent style, but I've already said this is a a stone soup of a project. It's just a place where we're trying out different things to see what works. So here I want to query for the hands. I think that's it. And I'll also expect that there's only ever one hands in the world. What um, hands equal hands dot single. And now hands has a left hand. Okay, that's atrocious. Um, let's just name this tool. Get back where it was. Hands.tool is an optional item. So let's um, match against it, I guess. Oh, here's where I forget the match syntax. Some tool. And none. So... If we have a tool, I need to get its graphics. I need to say sprite. Okay, so if it's... Okay, I understand what I'm doing. So, if it's none, visible, equals false. But if it has a tool, then it should be visible. And the sprite.index should equal graphics dot item map of tool. Well, visible dot is visible. This is a map, right? Why would I name that map if it's not a map? Hash map. Takes world object. Let me just... Expected world object. Oh, fair enough. Expected use size. Found texture out with sprite. Oh, it just changes the entire sprite. Okay. So this should be a world object. Oh man, it's been so long. Tool. Perhaps item tool. Item type tool. Is there a better way to work with enums like this? Probably. Okay, you want an ampersand?
dereference is what that one said. I think. Moves. Uh, sure. Clone. And let's go ahead and add that system. Uh, update hand UI. Man, I really have not been talking that much, it feels like. So now, if I craft an axe. <gasps> wow! Look at that. It shows up in the inventory. <laughs> or in the, the bar. How interesting. I think that's a bug with, um... So let me see if I can make that bug happen again. I was holding down and then I clicked off the game, I think. I just got stuck holding down, which is a problem with the input system. Oh, oops, just had a bunch of S's. So we now have um, a tool. I guess we need to make a shovel. What would it take to make a shovel? Because we need to be able to dig up those stumps. So, shovel. Hope that's how you spell shovel. And I think Sal so put one on the sprite sheet. Ah, oh, beautiful. We have a shovel. And is it in the description? No. Wait. No, but I can add it. So tool shovel will be positioned. I think it's just right next to it. Oh, I actually really like this um, size instead of a min and a max. I'm just now noticing that. That's really cool. Let's make it where you can craft a shovel. Let's see, crafting. I need to, okay, today I might be moving the recipes out, but for now, we just need to hack one more time. Actually, I want to base it off of the um, axe. And let's say this makes a shovel. Is this all it takes to add a new crafting recipe? Does the game actually work? All right, we don't have the graphic working, but now I can craft a shovel. And I have my invisible shovel. And craft an ax. And I can swap between the ax and my invisible shovel. Why is my shovel invisible? Uh, probably because I changed two values when I only need to change one. Yeah, this is still 64, because it's just one next to it. Mm -hmm. Y should still be 64. Oh, it's not 32 over, it's only 16 over. Hmm. Okay. 48. Oh man, look at that. I really love when things just kind of start working. can change between items. Oh, and you can't cut down if you have a shovel in your hand. Oh man, how exciting. Um, and now, that still works, but what if I only had four inventory slots? How does it behave? All right, let's just save me some time. Um, now let's see. Make an axe, make a shovel, equip the axe, get some wood, this up. No slot available for twig. Oh. So it does swap. Hmm. Okay. But what if I wanted to be able to take this out of my hand by clicking on it? I guess that's a feature for next week. Let's let's move crafting. 
into a, a more sensible file. So all it takes to um, add a crafting recipe is you just have to add the graphic and add it to the tooling. Them. Let's make a, a folder called uh, notes. And let's say adding crafting recipe. So step one is going to be um, crafting recipes must be an item, I think. Start documenting some things. This is more of documenting a process, but I also might off camera go around and write up doc comments for all of this. So it's just more uh, approachable to people stumbling into the project. I haven't seen every minute of development. So where do we can craft? Oh wait, this would actually just be the crafting recipe. Strut produces an item type. So add new item to the item type enum. And it's an item slash cool. Step two. Define its graphic in uh, assets slash sprites desk dot rom. Step three is define the recipe in recipes dot rom, which we'll make, and that should just work. Yeah, that that's all it takes to add a crafting recipe to our game. Um, cool. I don't know if this notes folder is a good idea, but it's just nice to start documenting some, um, I guess, gameplay development features. And it would be nice if we didn't have to actually add, hmm, I guess all new items will have some code feature, but it would be nice, um, oops. To do, be nice to make it where basic items, food and stuff, shouldn't need code changes. So if I have like berries in the game and I want to add carrots, I should be able just to add carrots as a food item and it all just work out in the future without ever having to, you know, add to the code, um, the carrot enum. I don't know how practical that is or what that might look like, but it'd be interesting. Okay, let's get crafting loading from a ROM file now. So this will be called recipes.ron. And here we need to Take all of her. I right, let's close out some tabs. Just close them all out. We need to take this giant beast here and I'll load it from a ROM file. So goodbye. Oh wait. Goodbye. This. How do we convert to ROM? We delete this which I kind of don't like. I wish that I could keep um, the name of the strut in the file. And then each item, recipes, it's not called Vec anymore. It's just one of these. Let's um, unindent it. I need a wrong formatter. Wonder if one exists. And here I need to load it from a ROM file, which I think is ROM. Let's look at the, the docs. Uh, let's see, seven's available. Uh, ROM Rust. Do we have like a from file? Ooh, I want to be here. There's that. 
we can get it from string. Can we get it from file? Deserializer. Mm. I guess from string is just the easiest to use. Whatever. Uh, let's just copy the code that we used for sprites. We read it to a string and then we create it. Thank you. I'm using my mouse a lot today. Um, oh, which means it's not in the Vim buffer. So this is now a crafting book. description, which is going to be a crafting book, uh, which is actually just going to be called crafting book. So import the file system. Wait, oh, import standard file system. The path is assets. I wish, hmm, probably be way too much to get hot reloading working. Recipes. And then from the crafting description, we do Ron from string. Oops. All right. What what are you not happy about? From string. Oh, Ron D. My mistake. And it's not happy. Expected identifier. Yeah, I know. Oh, we need to serialize in the crafting book. Which means probably on the recipes. Serialize. And book here. Also, I guess it's clonable. Pub. Oh, item and count needs to serialize. Sure. And now, all I need to do is put the crafting book here. Not crafting box, what's wrong with my brain? And now let's start fighting with the ROM issues. All right, what do we got? Failed to load at 214, expected array. Is an array notated by square brackets. Ah, it is. 324 expects a strut. And a strut, I think, is with the circle braces. <sighs> for being something built for Rust, it's kind of frustrating that this is um, so different. And it's different in just like the most trivial of ways. How far does that get us? It's nice that we don't have to recompile. Okay, we don't need this item type stuff. Uh, let's replace. Um, give me a second. Item type with nothing. Oh, wait, colon colon with nothing. Beautiful. Unknown variant tool. Expected shovel. Uh, oh, now I've done it. So let's delete that. And we're expecting a strut now on line 16. Okay, so we've done it. Beautiful. Probably could find and replace all of these. But it's one of those days. Honestly, I could probably just write one big Vim macro to uh, auto convert files. I've done something bad. 
When did I do that? I've deleted a, a recipe. Alright, well, we'll just recreate that recipe. Pardon me, as I go forward in time. Uh, Purdue Iyer. What did I do? So glad this is on video so I can go back and see what I did. Uh, but this should successfully create both the items that actually do stuff in the game. And just to prove that it's working, I can make the sh shovel take uh, flint, two flint. Well, cool. I guess that was two commits that I did in one. Uh, I could break it up, but you know. So this, uh, what's this could be warning about? Commands is unused. Why? Where did I get commands and then not use it? Oh, what well, the handy why does not need commands. Beautiful. Um, okay, let's add these changes. So, adds. Um, if applied, this commit will add the uh, player hand UI and move crafting to our run file and move recipes to our run file. Beautiful. Mm. Hope I didn't just commit that. I did. Let's see. Probably could go back and edit the commit. Uh, typo. But this is fine. Cool. So I think this is actually a good place to cut out. Uh, sorry for this taking both two weeks to get out, having a cut in the middle, and being um, a bit scatterbrained. But I think we've made some good progress, and I'm actually kind of happy with how the game turned out today. Uh, next week, I will probably try to do like some biomes or something. I, the, we need the world to actually generate more than just having a grid of test objects. At least that's my vision. Maybe I'll also instead do the uh, the campfire. I've been thinking I actually might want to save the campfire until maybe two weeks when I'm caught up on the shader videos because that will be a good practical example of using some shaders because we'll be able to do a day-night cycle and maybe some 2D lighting. I don't know. That might also just be way too much for me to do in a live session. But yeah, we'll see. As always, thank you for watching. I hope there is something of value here and that you're interested in seeing how this community project grows. I'll see you next time.